Uh, this morning, we want to talk a little bit about money. Oh, don't, don't go to sleep. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Bro, you finna try to tell us how much to give? No, 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 not at all. I've entitled the lesson this morning is how we handle money important to God. It's how we handle money important to God. You know, I don't speak on money that often, but uh, you, did you not know that Jesus communicated about money and possessions more than any other topic in the New Testament? I, some of you may say, I don't know about that, Brother Gary. Well, well, he talked about it quite often. Um, there are numerous scriptural references, more than he talked about it, more than he talked about heaven and hell. We gave some lessons on heaven and hell a couple of weeks ago and about prayer and about faith. Um, and I believe God wants us to recognize the powerful relationship between our true spiritual condition and our attitude and our actions concerning money and possession. And the brother read in your hearing a few moments ago, and I want to start there, Luke 16, 10. The one who is faithful, I'm reading from the New American Standard Translation, who's faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. The one who is unrighteous in a very little thing is also unrighteous in much. Therefore, if, you're not, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, who will entrust the true wealth to you? And this is Jesus talking. Listen to this example in John, in, in Luke chapter 3, verse 7, Luke 3, 7, beginning at verse 7. This is John the Baptist, and, and uh, he's the forerunner of Christ. It says, so he was saying to the crowds who were going out to be baptized by him, you offspring, John, boy, he was a mighty strong, every now and then he would just call it out. He says, you offspring of vipers, you, who warn you to flee from the wrath to come? And he's primarily talking to Jews at this time. He says, therefore, produce fruits that are consistent with repentance. And do not start saying to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. They were arrogant because they were Jews and not like they were more better than anybody else or special. For I say to you that, those, that these stones... For these stones God is able to raise up children for Abraham. But indeed, the axe is already being laid at the root of the tree. So every tree, tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And then, this is verse 10. And the crowds were questioning him, saying, then what, shall, what are we to do? Listen to this. And he would answer them and say, the one who, notice what, you, what, what John the Baptist, he says this, the one who has two tunics is to share with the one who has none. This is the attitude God wants us to have about possessions, about, think, about the things that the, the world puts top priority on and the world measures success and failure by what we have. He says to the Christians, to the followers of God, this is the attitude I want you to have. You want to know, want, want to ask, what shall we do? He says, those of you that have something, give something. He goes on and he says, and the one who has food is to do likewise. Then, this is in the verse 12. Now, even tax collectors, we just talked about tax collectors a while ago, they have money, but they got it the wrong way. He says this, came to be, even they came to be baptized, but tax collectors still need God. Amen. And John was preaching the message. They heard it. They knew they needed to do some changes, changes, and they said, but oh, John, John, what do we need? What, what, what are we to do? And he said to them, collect no more than what you've been ordered to. He says to, to, to them, he say, treat people right. That's right. That's do it. your job, but don't cheat, folk. That's right. Anybody in here need to hear that? That's right. Huh. That's right. Yeah, oh, bro, I'm a Christian. I, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Well, do your job and don't cheat people. 